I'm Dr. Randy Martin with the Marcus Hart Valve Center at Piedmont, Atlanta, and I'm thrilled to be joined by my colleague and good friend, Dr. David Adams, who many of you know. David's the premier mitral valve repair surgeon. Can I say that? Is that okay? Wow. Huh? Why not? So, so we're at this meeting, and um, we've, been, we've had a, a really interesting discussion this morning on mitral repair, timing, when to refer. And, you know, you've, you, you made some interesting comments about the importance of imaging in that whole process. Tell me what your thoughts are. This, this, this meeting today is focused primarily on imaging and valve disease, Randy, and I think it's really important, first, to, to address the issue that I think imaging, if it was undervalued before, it's becoming really valued right. now. And that is that we're learning that imaging today and imagers can help us understand mitral valve disease, which is so important because there's so many lesions. It's unlike aortic disease where you have two or three lesions, the mitral valve can have 10 or 12 or 14 right, different lesions. Right. And by you guys doing a better job of telling us what the lesions are, that helps us decide when to operate on a patient because we have this whole movement now toward early intervention as long as the patient gets a valve repair. So determining the, the complexity of disease right. is so important and it was just so interesting to listen to the discussion today versus three or four years ago and the sophistication now of talking about scallops, indentations, segmental prolapse, segmental height and I think that, that the imaging community now is really talking the way we talk in operative notes in terms of how they're looking at valves. That's so critical when we try and decide when to intervene in a patient, and if we're going to intervene, who should do the intervention? Is this a simple valve? Right. As one of the surgeons pointed out, I can do this repair, but I send these repairs to my colleague. And if it's a very complex valve, are we able to do that in our own hospital, or do we need to send that out to the next person? So I think that it was a really interesting discussion talking about how imaging can guide referral. And then, of course, the next thing is imaging guiding the intervention. Yeah, yeah. And that's not been so important in surgery because we're looking at the valve. But in the interventional community where you're doing repair like MitraClip, and we saw a lot of fantastic data from the Piedmont group today, imaging is a critical part of that procedure. And as we move toward transcatheter valve replacement and other types of repair off the heart-lung machine, it's all going to be image-guided. So it, it's a really exciting time, I think, and it really shows you that this heart team concept, boy, imaging is really going to be central in mitral valve care. I mean, I think you're right. You know, you made the point, I think we, we discussed it, that going back to the primary repair group is that you, you not only want to look at the valve, but you want to look at the consequences of the MR, the left atrial size, you emphasize the size of the ventricle, the pressures in the heart. So there really is a completeness that you as a surgeon needs from the from the the imager, isn't that correct? Yeah, well, it was fun because you know, again, so much of mitral surgery as opposed to, for instance, aortic surgery. Aortic surgery is driven primarily by symptoms of patients. Right. There's very little indication for or intervention in an asymptomatic patient with aortic stenosis. On the other hand. There's a lot of indications based on the performance of your ventricle in asymptomatic patients that are very active with mitral valve regurgitation. And that's why, as you said, the completeness of an echo is a little bit different, I think, in mitral valve disease. And we really do want to understand very carefully the, 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 the consequences of mitral valve regurgitation on the ventricle, even though the patient may feel well. And I think that was a fun discussion because a lot of the, a lot of the attendees are ultrasonographers and I, I could sort of see their, their, the, the, you know, their, them lighting the lights up. Went on, the yeah, lights as they went. were sort of realizing that a lot of what we're able to tell, on, to, to, to decipher is going to have a real clinical meaning. It's always fun when you tie the sort of technical aspects of something to actual clinical meaning. Well, the, and the neat thing about this is uh, meetings like these where we have surgeons uh, cardiologists and imagers who might not be physicians together, they get to see the anatomic, they get to see your surgical pictures or, you know, Fred's or anybody like that, and they really then begin to learn yeah, you, and understand the complexity. Yeah, it's fun to connect the dots in the same way with, with the, the clip therapy and the valve. I think it's been really interesting to see 
how that field has moved very quickly into clinical practice now. And a center like yours, this Piedmont Center, is really using this on a daily basis right now, as there were a lot of other you know, centers that were represented in the audience. So it's, a, it's an exciting time in, in mitral valve intervention. And it, again, I, imaging has become increasingly recognized as the central point toward when to intervene, who should intervene, and what type of intervention. So it's an exciting time. Last quick question, because I know you've got to run. The, the, um do you, what do you think five, 10 years down the line, what's gonna be the role of the mitral valve repair surgeon versus the mitral interventional physician with transcatheter versus, you, you, you know where uh, I'm going. I you mean, know, I, I think that if the, I think if the, if you wanted me to ask me to sort of where these things tilt, right. the transcatheter aortic business tilts more toward intervention. Correct because it's not, you know, the, the, as the devices get smaller, they're more femoral, they're more wire-based. Yes, there are many surgeons and groups that are getting experience with that, but the, it's gonna be, you, you really are gonna work hard to catch up to the interventional expertise. Likewise, in the mitral space, I think the interventions are always gonna need to be involved. Imagers will, all, it, there'll be image-guided treatments. Absolutely. This is again gonna be heart team, but if the TAVR side tilts toward intervention, I think the mitral, at least in the short term, is gonna to tilt toward surgery because these devices, most of them will be put in transapical first. And um, I think that surgeons will be, and also the surgeon's knowledge of the mitral valve is gonna be very and important. And the complexity, the heart of, team. The complexity and, yeah. of the disease. So again, if you, you know, they're all valuable players, but if you if you ask me that, that on the transcat, the imager is gonna be central in all of it. On the transcatheter side, it's on the aortics, it's probably the interventional side playing the offense and we're playing the defense and vice versa and the mitral side, I think surgeons will probably play the offense and the interventionists will be there to help us a lot. Super, well listen, we appreciate you being part of the, part of the course and continuing to teach us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks Randy. Thank you.